Hello and welcome back. This episode of Digitally uh, features a speaker we've had here before. It's a guest I think you've heard talk about digital transformation. And today we want to unpeel another topic, and that's the topic of learning. It's the, the topic of digital literacy and the velocity of learning. Now, in this discussion, we previously talked about the pace of change. We've talked about the fact that the pace of change, as much as it's accelerated, it's actually the slowest it's ever going to be going forward. And so in that world, in that environment, digital literacy becomes really important. I'm super happy that Ali, Ali Ventura is joining us back because I have seen him drive a program of digital literacy at, at Unilever, where he is the CIO of the North America business, and really achieved some amazing heights. And along the way, obviously, there's been lots of learnings. Ali, welcome back. Thank you, Sanjay. So Ali, you heard that tee up and, you know, without further ado, I want to jump in the topic of digital literacy. Why are you so passionate about it? Uh, I think uh, uh, as technology is uh, permeating uh, more and more all the aspects of our lives and our business, uh, I think, uh, and I see a lot of my, you know, business executives getting into, you know, uh, the knowledge of technology or trying to get into knowledge of technology, et cetera, et cetera. And I think uh, if you are a business executive today, you need to understand the art of the possible because uh, I think uh, technology until, uh, uh, you know, uh, some, some years ago was just an enabler. Uh, but today technology can open horizons that uh, were not there before. So I do believe that uh, as business executive, uh, uh, people need to become uh, much, much more uh, savvy from a tech perspective. They don't need to be, you know, uh, to know the, the nitty gritty details, but uh, they need to open up their mind to the art of the possible. Because then when you introduce new technology, you know, these business executive are the people that will need to start uh, redesigning and reshaping their organization to enable the business, um, the business process to be executed through the lens of this technology. And so maybe uh, I'll make a couple of examples. A logistic planner from uh, 10 years ago uh, has a set of skills that uh, a logistic planner today will, will not have. So a logistic planner today will be different from one 10 years ago. And you cannot replace a logistic planner today with another one. You need to think about uh, what else do I need? Uh, the same for CBMs in sales. A CBM in sales 10 years ago had to be hardcore salesman. I'm not saying that that hardcore set of skills has gone away, but on top of that, you need to be data-driven. You need to be analytical. You need to understand your numbers because uh, you're gonna have more and more dashboards and charts and numbers flying around you need to understand, you need to be able to interpret the chart and actually make, uh, being able to transform the in-business decision. I think what you're saying is, um, in many ways, digital is not an answer that's looking for a question. Um, true transformation comes from starting with the right questions. And I suspect part of the challenge here is that you don't know the questions to ask unless you understand the possibilities that are ahead of you. And this is where digital literacy comes in because it brings you up to speed to where the world is with digital capabilities that allows you to probe and ask the right questions. And on the back end of that, obviously we apply digital and we transform it. Uh, so that's very helpful, Ali. You know, uh, one of the things I've actually admired about you is the way you've personally driven this in your organization, both up and down. And, and you know, give me, you know, I'm, 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 I have some understanding of what you've done, but if you wanna share a couple of uh, insights from that journey, just even with your leadership team, how you've driven this digital literacy program. Yeah, and uh, so it all started uh, when uh, at the beginning of this year, my CEO Fabian asked me to uh, have a crash course of uh, about technology. Um, he, you know, he wants to be future fit and uh, he, you know, he wants to lead the company from the front and being, uh, uh, be an example uh, and a role model. And so he asked me to create this, uh, you know, crash course, uh, uh, digital, digital upskilling curriculum for him. And so I created this curriculum uh, uh, starting from the very basic uh, 
uh, all the way to advanced analytics. Uh, we did a couple of sessions on uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence uh, uh, with uh, my director of artificial intelligence, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I think uh, um, I was talking to him the other day and he said, uh, to me, it was an eye opening. Not because now I understand everything about uh, this, but I understand now what we have and I understand now what we can do. And he said that to me, very few people understand the wealth of uh, technology that we have and the, the, business, uh, the business opportunity that all this technology enables us to capture. And so he's become, uh, he's become a true fanatic uh, uh, of a tool that we, we created for, uh, for Target, uh, which is our second big, largest customer. Uh, because he's seen how people using that tool can change the way they work and can change the way they make decisions. So I, I thought it was, a, it, was an excellent, uh, it was an excellent program. He was, I have to say, an excellent, uh, uh, an excellent uh, uh, person to, to be on the other end. And, uh, and we're now uh, thinking and understanding also with the help of our uh, um, head of HR, how can we expand uh, this uh, to the entire board uh, of Unilever North America? Yeah, first of all, I'm just so inspired just by your personal energy because you've got a full-time job as a CIO of one of the largest um, enterprises uh, in North America. And, and then on top of that, you've taken personally the responsibility of driving digital literacy. And so kudos to you. What's also amazing, and this is very aspirational, is to the, hear the story of your CEO. And, and you know, uh, I have a similar setup where I work, but broadly, that's just a dream job with a dream CEO or a dream boss, right? I think that's fantastic. Ali, my third comment is, if you ever consider taking some of those crash courses beyond the boundaries of Unilever, please do it here. I've got, a, I've got a great group of people that I think will at least, uh, you know, uh, would love to see it. So thank you. Uh, if you can think about something, because I think there's, a, there's a, 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 an army of executives out there that would be screaming for it. That's right. That's exactly right. Well, we'll have to figure that out then together. Listen, I want to talk a little bit about another concept that you and I have discussed, which is learning velocity. And I think the two go hand in hand. But first, tell us a little bit about you know, your thoughts on learning velocity and why is that such a critical thing? I think learning velocity is going to be the uh, distinctive feature of successful company going forward. Uh, because uh, learning velocity is the ability uh, of an organization to be receptive uh, to new processes, changes in technology, changes in processes, changing in uh, the, the way work gets done, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, um, I do believe that uh, this is uh, this is critical, uh, especially for uh, for the for the time in history in which we live. Everybody's seen uh, what happened uh, in March 2020 with COVID, and everybody's seen that uh, people that have taken that as an opportunity to pivot and pivot fast have not only succeeded, but were really, really, really successful. Uh, companies that haven't taken that uh, uh, as an opportunity and try to continue with their old business model uh, are probably out of business already. And so I think uh, this ability and the, a company is made of people. And so that's why, to me, we need to foster a culture of uh, learning velocity in, uh, in, uh, in our companies if we want our company to be successful. Uh, and the, 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 the distinctive feature for me is uh, when we implement a change in the company, do people react like, oh my gosh, another change, you know, on top of everything I need to do? Or are people excited about that change because that change may imply the opportunity to, to do what they have to do in a, in a more fun way? And so that, that to me is crucial. Ali, you've said so much in so few words, but, you know, I want to just, just pause on that for 30 seconds. You know, it's actually been said before that culture eats strategy for breakfast. We talk about the competitive nature of companies and what really allows people to, uh, companies to win in the long run. But I think what you've done is you've taken culture and you've actually shown, uh, put a bit, of, bit of a spotlight on it. And I think you've brought out this learning velocity as a really important part of that. And uh, that's amazing. 
and 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 it's also um, it's also then breaks into so many components, right? Because doesn't that actually mean that it's um, you're not hiring for skills anymore? You're hiring for attitude. You're not hiring for knowledge. You're hiring for curiosity. You're not just you know bringing people on in that know how to do that job, but you're actually constantly bringing tools and training and ability for them to keep evolving their roles. And it's such a profound statement that you've made. Um, how does that translate into some of these things for you at Unilever? It's uh, basically, um, it's really the ability for us is a, a constant, uh, you know, attempt. It's, a, it's yeah. a bit of a test and learn. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we're not, we're not all the way there. Uh, yeah. we're not back of the pack. I think we are in the, in the middle, uh, middle part of the, of the sector, but, uh, yeah. uh, I think that we cannot get discouraged yeah. by maybe initial pushback from people and, uh, especially the leadership needs to be all in with this, uh, uh with the concept of uh, adapting to, to new things. Because we cannot do things as uh, we, we cannot we cannot create a promotion uh, uh, a promotional event simply because it, we think it's good. We need to get it past the analytics. We need to get the analytics tell us how much uh, is going to be the ROI. Are we going to generate additional turnover and additional profit, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And we need to trust the machine. I love that. It's not a destination; it's a journey. This is not. The sort of thing you say, well, I'm finally done with continuous learning and learning velocity and we're there. You're never there. You always have to keep working on it and keep improving it. And so that's, uh, that's great insight. Ali, uh, tremendous as always. Thank you for taking the time and sharing some of your insights with us. We'd love to have you back another time. But for now, thank you. Goodbye. And we'll see you soon. Thank you for having me, Sanjay. Bye.